KTM. Uh, you know, I think he's got to work a few bugs out. Uh, he says he's comfortable with it. And, you know, without a lot of test time, it's really hard to come out here and come to the X Games with a difficult track. Here it is. And put it all together. Well, he uses the speed shoot coming out of Qualcomm Stadium, makes the pass on Matt Burton. So it's Chris Fillmore now sitting in second place, and both these riders trying to keep a close eye or keep in contact with your leader, Mark Burkhart. The top two riders out of this six-lap affair move right into the final for everyone else to LCQ. And you know as a rider, the less time you have to race, the better for you. Yeah, nobody really wants to go into LCQ. I mean, you know, it's just there's, there's too many things that can happen in the last chance qualifier, and these guys want to just get into the main event, get back to their truck, make any final adjustments, get ready for the main event. This is lap two of six. For the guys that don't know, the fans that are watching right now, Doug, point out the difference between these bikes, primarily the tires, what we see in Supercross and stadium racing, and what they see in Supermoto. Yeah, the big difference, the obvious thing is the tires. You know, they have no knobbies, it's slick tires. But another thing that, that, that's different about these bikes is the tire pressure. Out on the asphalt, you get a lot of traction, and you need to have that pressure. You don't want the tires moving around on you too much. So you got a few obstacles that you're working on with the bike on the dirt. You know, that you got the, the slick tires, you got the high tire pressure, and the stiff suspension. Oh, I'll play devil's advocate here for the folks watching home. How do you race slick tires, though, on a dirt track? Lots of practice. It's almost like riding a motocross bike in a very, very slippery condition. You have very limited traction. You've got to have very good throttle control. And this is an opportunity when they come outside. A lot of the riders love to come out here because it lets them get the dirt off the tires, and now they can go to that road, 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 road racing form where they can lay the bike over a little bit more. Yeah, they got to be careful on the first left and the first right just to get those tires cleaned off. And it seems like the way they come down, you come into a, uh, a sweeping little left-hand turn and a tight right. By after that, their tires should be nice and clean, and they're able to get on and accelerate out of the corners. Speaking of accelerating, you were looking at our leader right there on the blue Yamaha. That is number one, Mark Burkhart. He got the whole shot from Pataskala, Ohio. The 28-year-old is out in front and running away with this one. As he comes back into Qualcomm, you can see just how big his lead is, ballooning up to almost six seconds, which may not seem like a lot over a guy like Chris Fillmore, but six seconds in Supermoto is a lot of time. Yeah, it is a lot. And I actually, that was the section that, uh, that Mark just went through is the, is the spot where he's making up his time. There's a there's a six pack we'll call it, and a lot of the guys are just going two two two, and Mark is able to go three three, which is going to shave off probably a half a second a lap. The man in the most precarious situation right now is in third place. It'll be bike number 180. That's Derek Costello. Why? Because he's on the outside looking in. Top two move into the main event. But third place, which is number 180, Derek Costello. There you see him right there. He is in a situation where he's so close to moving into the final, as Doug pointed out, would rather not have to turn six more laps and take a chance. So he's going to have to go to LCQ if he doesn't improve his position. That's that's true. He's going to have to make it in there. And, uh, I was surprised at Derek. I saw him in practice. He looked really, really well. He's real comfortable in the dirt. And, you know, getting into that last chance qualifier, he's going to have a good gate pick. So hopefully he can get the start that he needs and get into the main event. Wow, gate picks seem to be huge. As we watched the first couple qualifiers go through, Jeff Ward, one of the only guys that didn't take that inside lap, he had it, but he still made it work for him. We'll get on more on that in just a moment. But 180 is Derek Costello. We are watching him. He sits in third place in a situation right now. If it ended, he would be going to an LCQ. But there is your leader, number one, Mark Burkhardt, sitting in first place out of the USA on board his Yamaha second place is bike number 11. He'll be coming to view here in about oh, four seconds. But Burkhardt is loving the speed shoot out of Qualcomm. Yeah, I mean, Mark, Mark, uh, you know, he's been riding that Yamaha for a few years now, and he's just really, really comfortable with it. He's real comfortable with the team. The team has been working together for a couple years now. The dynamics have improved. And, uh, you know, I just, I just look to see Mark improving over the next few years. Well, if your sensories aren't overloaded enough, folks, click over to expn.com. Believe it or not, a live chat going down right now with the king, Jeremy McGrath. Get his feelings on this whole Navy Moto X World Championships. He's going to join us in the booth, talk a little speed and style later on today. But right now, the king, expn.com. Jeremy McGrath, go for a live chat. But make sure you leave your TV on because this is a great one right here. Mark Burkhart continues to lead. Number one, second place is Chris Fillmore, but still much more racing to go here in San Diego, California. Yeah, there it is right there. That, he, he just just made it look so smooth, you know. Uh, you know, Mark did the triple triple. I mean, that that really uh, that's really going to help him with his lap times. Well, here, here comes the battle, and the white flag comes out. White flag in this sport, folks, means one lap 
to go. And believe it or not, Derek Costello, he must really love this dirt, this terra firma in San Diego County because he's closing the gap on Chris Fillmore. And I got to think Chris Fillmore's pit boards are saying, you're losing time, dude. He, I think Chris, you know, he doesn't want to make a mistake in the dirt. His specialty is asphalt. You know, when he's done with Supermoto, he wants to go road racing. And uh, I think he's riding a little bit conservative in the dirt on that last lap. So I think I, I could see him stretching it out here. I just hope he doesn't give up too much time coming into the dirt. Costello just up to 15 in Las Vegas, Nevada. That's where he calls home. 24 years of age. Only weighs 145 pounds. So throwing that big beast around in the dirt seems to be his favor right now. But there you see it. You called it Chris Fulmore stretching out his lead just a little bit on the concrete. But when they get back inside Qualcomm, can Derek Costello make a move, get in front of that bike, number 11, and get into second place, which will transfer him right into the main event? I really think it's going to take a, a mistake from Chris uh, on his part. You know, hopefully he gets through the dirt section nice and smooth and, and uh, transfers right into the main. Back on the soil right now, 180 is Derek Costello sitting in third place. We get a quick look at our leader. That is number one, Mark Burkhart. One more left-hand turn, a tabletop, a step up, and the beauty thing is checkered flags. And look at this, Costello making a push, but he's going to run out of real estate. It will be Chris Fillmore who gets the second and final transfer position into the main event. Derek Costello will get a great gate pick, but he will be going on to LCQ. But the big win, though, Mark Burkhart from start to finish. Yeah, he's the man out there today. And and, uh, you know, I expect to see him, you know, ride smooth. He, he's a smart rider. He's definitely calmed down in the last year. He's, he's really uh, learned to be more consistent. And uh, well, let's watch this replay. This word all shook down for Chris Fillmore. Look at this move. Yeah, they just split lines. You know, Chris was able to square it up, head up the tunnel with more momentum coming out of there. And, uh, you know, get on that inside. Once you're on the inside, you just got to protect it. 39, the white of Matt. Burton. He was a little bit surprised. I think he thought he had that line cover, but the power of Chris Fillmore changed all his fortunes. Chris Fillmore's moving on to the final with that man. Mr. Mark Burkhart, your winner here in the Supermoto Qualifiers. Right now, let's send it back out to the main man of San Diego County, Sal Masakela. Indeed, indeed. Looks like Mark Burkhart, the man to beat so far. And uh, you guys, we've just gotten started. So let me give you a little preview of what's going down today. It is a full plate because we've got Moto X best trick coming on later on. The progression in this sport, unbelievable. You're defending gold medalist Kyle Loza from the X Games, trying to one up his burial with something he calls the electric death. Never landed it to dirt, only to foam. Look at this. Does a backflip over the bike. Can he land it? He will not practice it. He will only throw it in competition. And then who can forget about the Midwest son, Scott Murray, trying to do with only 199. Travis Pastrana has done the double back trip, double back flip. This was what happened to him. He got eaten up at X Games. But let me tell you something. He has made three of four over the last couple months. Hopefully, he'll get it done tonight. And there he is, the GOAT, the greatest of all time, Ricky Carmichael. He's set to go and take NASCAR on, but not before he steps it up in Step Up. Ricky is so excited about this. Brian Deegan even saying that he thinks that Ricky is going to win tonight. Todd, let's get ready for heat number four. Thank you very much, Sal. As we move on, now let's take a look at our Castro power to perform here before we release our fourth and final qualifying heat here in the Supermoto. And uh, tell you what, the talent that has been out there throughout the morning has been fantastic. Let's bust back to earlier in the day. Jeff Ward and David Pingree had a battle royale. Yeah, Jeff just seemed to look a lot of, you know, smoother on the asphalt. He didn't seem to be as twitchy. Uh, you know, David Pingree made a little bit of a mistake and allowed Jeff to sneak inside him and uh, came away with the win. No worries. The electronic ping, David Pingree, happy to be in there. He qualified second, so he moves in. And we've already got those who have made it into the big dance. March Madness may be over, but this is April insanity. Herfoss, Conlon Ward, Pingree, Burkhart, and Fillmore, they are already in. We're looking for six more contestants who'd like to join them in the Moto X Super Moto Final later on today. As they warm the bikes up, we get set to go. As we said, there is number 15. That is Cassidy Anderson, the young man out of Provo, Utah. A lot of people think he may be a threat to win a Golden Helmet. Yeah, Cassidy's a he's a fast rider. He's a quick starter. Um, you know, he's he's back on the Troy Lee Designs Honda team. You know, he didn't even know he was going to be on the, on the team. He didn't know what he was doing in February. So he has a little limited time on the bike, but I think he'll uh, come out on top. 
Well, the 30 board is straight up vertical. We'll get ready for it to drop sideways. We take a look at our lineup. Anderson, Nickel, Carlson, Lewis, Halliday, Dimmick, Welsh, Heath Voss, unable to make the journey from Detroit Rock City after Supercross last night. Boy, these dirt starts are just really tricky. You know, it's just so slippery out there with these slick tires. board goes sideways. We are set to go racing. Six laps. Only the top two move on to the final for everyone else is an LCQ. Wow. Tricky corner right there. I mean, you're literally 20 feet and then you're out. It looks like number eight, bike number eight of Kurt Nickel on board the KTM. He's going to be first out of the chute with 49 right behind him. Yeah, if you saw that, if you go back to that start, you could see how Cassidy came out in front, but Kurt just muscled his way through. 45 is Benny Carlson. He sits in second. Kurt Nickel is in first place right now. As we mentioned, he lost taking part in Supercross in Detroit tonight. Unable to get here, so he is not in this. So it's a seven-man heat. A little bit of an advantage, but whenever Kurt Nickel's in there, there's no advantage. Yeah, Benny's got his hands full, you know. Uh, Cassidy's all over him. He's going to do everything he can to transfer in this event. So there are your top Runners right now, Kirk Nickel right there on board the Orange KTM sits in first place. A little bit of a shakeup right there as Cassidy Anderson gets past and then gets past. Yeah, this will be a good one. I don't know if Kurt's necessarily the fastest guy out there. I think he's gonna keep this a tight race. They make their way through the chicane back inside Qualcomm Stadium. This is our fourth and final qualifying round. Top two moving on to the final. Todd Harris along with Doug Henry, the four-time champion. Glad you're with us. And we got a little action coming through here. As Kurt Nickel continues to lead, it is a battle with Benny Carlson, number 45, and Cassidy Anderson, number 15. Yeah, I think Benny's going to have to pick it up a little bit in the dirt there. You know, you can see Cassidy catch him, you know, and almost make a pass. So I think he's got to, uh, you know, just kind of time it a little bit better. Get on the downside of those jumps so we be able to accelerate through. All right, you talk about Kurt Nickel, our leader out in front right there. You say he may not be the fastest guy. How does he maximize every single corner to stay out in front? Well, he's a, he's a, he rides a wide bike. You know, he's a, he's a strong guy. He's, he's raced motocross in, in Europe for, for many years. And uh, he's got a lot of racing experience a lot he's used to guys being behind him but boy i tell you that corner's, corner's been giving a lot of people uh trouble you know guys are able to sneak inside and, and make the pass and wow oh, there goes uh, two for one yeah. so benny carlson and cassidy anderson get around kurt nickel as my partner doug henry was expanding the glorious resume of one kurt nickel maybe he was listening because he wasn't paying attention <laughs> to his line got passed by both guys now he's in a position not to make it in the main event we will have the lcq to fall back on but as you've said no one wants to race more than they have to right now unless it's for fun. And right now, these guys out front are having all kinds of fun. Betty Carlson and Cassidy Anderson continue their battle. And this time, it looks like Cassidy Anderson gets the better of him. Better of him. But once again, he gives up his line. And here comes Betty Carlson. That was amazing right there. Cassidy just went from first to third. Back to second. <laughs> Cassidy Anderson sits in the middle of your screen right there. Bike number 15, number 8 is Kurt Nickel, who led for the first few laps here. But your leader now is Betty Carlson. Well, what a great day of racing. Weather not an issue at all. Temperatures in the 80s, blue sky. The concrete is responding well. Everyone's saying the tires are hooking up great. As you pointed out, after the first two turns, they are clean again, getting tacky. They're able to lay it over. And then the dirt has been great. I mean, no one's, we haven't seen anyone other than Kerry Hart in the first round have a washout. That was on the first turn. Yeah, it's tough getting through that first turn, boy. I mean, if you get a, if you get a shot at that later on, you know, the next start. You know, the, the, there's a lot of pebbles in there, little round, you know, balls of dirt. And these guys don't go through there only, you know, a few times a day. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just real slick in there. Textbook racing right now. Your leader, 45, is Benny Carlson. Cassidy Anderson sits in second. There's Kurt Nichols sitting in third. And it seems like Cassidy Anderson is just sizing him up. Once again, going to the inside here to this rhythm section. This is where he made the pass last time and then lost it again. But he's got two problems, trying to get around Benny Anderson and keeping Kirk Nickel from taking his spot. Yeah, Cassidy got the dirt down a little bit better. But uh, I don't know. I think, you know, you get onto the asphalt, that's Benny's favorite. You know, he, he, he does some road racing on the side. He's actually racing full-time uh, racing this year. And, you know, this, this, is his, this is his forte right here. He loves being out here on the asphalt where he can get up some speed. 
and speed he is getting right now on the outskirts of Qualcomm Stadium. That is your leader, number 45, Betty Carlson. Kurt Nickel leaving the view right now. Yeah, this is a tight race right now, and uh, you know, any little mistake can put one of these guys, you know, first to third or third to first. Kurt Nickel seems to be fading just a little bit off the pack, especially when they get outside, and that kind of surprised me. I thought he would be actually closing the gap when they got out of the asphalt. Yeah, I don't know. These two guys are hungry for it up front, you know. Matt and Cassidy, you know, they've been hoping to do this for, for a long time. You know, this is their full-time gig right now. And, and uh, you know, Kurt, Kurt races, but he also manages the racing team. So I don't think he has quite the amount of time to focus on uh, on racing like these, two, like these two guys. Well, he's hoping that these guys out front, Benny Carlson, your leader, and Cassidy Anderson, number 15, sitting in second place, may cause each other to take each other out. Kurt Nichols right there to slide in. As it stands right now, Kurt Nichols will be heading to a last chance qualifier. Remember, we're only taking the top two automatically transferring to the final, the main event later today, and Kurt Nichols on the outside looking in, looking at possibly racing one more six-lap affair. Benny Carlson, Cassidy Anderson, one and two, 45 and 15 right there is Cassidy Anderson out of Provo, Utah, trying to make a pass on Benny Carlson. He's shown him several different lines, but so far, Benny Carlson has had a great defense to shut that line down. Yeah, Benny, Benny's got this asphalt figured out. I think, uh, I think it's going to take a pretty good mistake from him and the asphalt for Cassidy to get by. But I, I think, you know, as fast as Cassidy is in the dirt, you know, coming down to, into that third section, the, the, the six-pack there, uh, Cassidy's just able to soak up the jumps a little bit better. Benny's just, you know, he seems to be bouncing off the jumps. Right. So, so Kurt Nickel making a nice close right there. He was back more than 50 yards closing. Look at this. Right on his heel. Here he comes, Cassidy Anderson on the inside, number 15. Does he have the line to shut the door? And he does. And Kurt Nickel tries to slide in and take advantage of it. Gets a two-for-one, not the case. So it is Cassidy Anderson with one lap to go who moves into the lead on this. Heat number four of round number one. Top two moving on. This is the lap that matters the most. Cassidy Anderson will lead them into the white flag lap. Yeah, I think Kurt's going to go back into his truck and kick himself because he had an opportunity to get by Benny there. You know, they were they, they, there's a there's a two line situation there. And both of the guys were going for the one line, and they weren't heading in there as well as they wanted to. I think Kurt could have squared it up, jumped on and stepped off, and I think he would have been on the inside for that next corner and possibly could have got by Benny. Kurt Nickel currently sitting in third place. You know, Benny used to ride for KTM, so Kurt Nickel obviously knows the talent this kid has out in front, but it is Cassidy Anderson out in front. Benny Carlson sits in second place on the final lap, and Kurt Nickel sits in third on his way unless he changes things to an LCQ or last chance qualifier. Yeah, Kurt got to see that whole pass on, on right in front of him. He, I'm sure he's going to try to do the same thing. He knows Benny's struggling in this six-pack here, and I think he's going to try and make the same thing happen. Well, it was on the inside line, and here he comes. Kurt Nickel on the inside on the orange bike. Does he have the line, or will he shut it down? Not enough distance to cover there as Benny Carlson recognized it. Closed the line down as they make one more left-hand turn. Your winner, Cassidy Anderson, grabs the victory here in heat number four. And Benny Carlson will hold on for second place, leading most of the race. But he gets second. He will transfer in. Kurt Nickel, the guy that got the whole shot and led the first lap, he is on his way to an LCQ. What a great bit of racing there. Cassidy Anderson, very happy. But let's go back. Kurt Nickel looked to be in the first lap, lap and a half, really in control of this race until this. Yeah, he just made, you know, just that little mistake, and, uh, you know, he tried to get it back, and, and that just left the door open for Cassidy. And here is where it was right before the last lap. Cassidy Anderson coming into Qualcomm, looks at that inside line. Yeah, he just outbraked Benny coming into that and just uh, you know carried his momentum right through the the six pack there. And this is where this is where you know Kurt should have squared it up and got him. So eight men are into the final. There are still many more who are trying to make it into the big show here at the Navy Moto X World Championships. The Navy Moto X World Championship featuring the music of Narls Barkley. Gnarly riders, gnarly tricks. Kyle Loza defying dimensions. Scott Murray versus the double flip. If you fall and don't succeed, throw it again. Best trick. Can you feel it?
Welcome back to San Diego, California, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. We are set to go. One minute to go before we get into round two of Supermoto. Todd Harris along with Doug Henry, Kimberly Pressler, and of course the hostess with the mostest, Sal Masakela. Hey folks, we want to remind you, coverage of the inaugural Navy Moto X World Championships continues today at 5 Eastern. Just bust on over to ESPN2. Be there as Ricky Carmichael leads a field in the Step Up Final Part 1, and Travis Pastrana has retuned his focus on Moto X and is the heavy favorite in the Speed and Style Final. As we take a look, we are set to go. This is our first of two LCQs. Now remember, the same format plays into it. Brandon Curry, Steve Drew, Joey Pascrell, all these. Everyone's trying to be in the top two. If you're not in the top two in this one, though, Doug, your day's done. Yeah, you know, th this, this, this is the tough one. You got to be ready. You got to get a good start. It's real focus on that jump. Get out, you know, get through that first turn without any trouble. There's Kerry Hart right there, number 46, rocking the Fox Zebra. There you see it. Curry, Atkins, Hart, Tracy, Chisholm, and Pugh, all six men vying for two spots. This is a true last chance qualifier. If you're in the top two, you're going on to the big show later on. If you're in the bottom four, enjoy a fish taco. And we've already got riders oh. down, two riders down. Carnage. Wow. Jerry Hart looked like he was in the mix of that. He's upset. Yeah, Josh Chisholm, though, gets away cleanly, as does bike number 112, Ryan Pugh. So it's Chisholm and Pugh. Unfortunately, there you see 825. He is dropped. Kerry Hart, 46. We saw this happen to him in the first one, and he is now having four-stroke fever, trying to get that thing kicked over. Boy, that's a rough start for him this year, you know. I know he's been training hard and he's uh, he's riding well, you know, just the, the starts, you know, it's unpredictable that it's real slippery on when you come into that first corner. So it's Josh Chisholm, your leader. Ryan Pugh, 112, sits in second place. But right now it looks like Josh Chisholm is ghostwriting out there. There's no one else. There we go. Second place and third now closing in just a bit. Brandon yeah. Curry sits in third. Josh has those starts down. I think he whole shot at the other uh, his other heat race. And uh, you know, he's just trying he's gonna try and get away from these guys as quick as he can. Only two go, the rest goes home. He comes back inside Qualcomm Stadium. That's Josh Chisholm dropping down the big ramp. Sitting in second place, though, is Ryan Pugh, Brandon Curry, Joey Pascrell, all these guys capable of catching up to Josh Chisholm. But remember, it's a six-lap affair, and only the top two can move on. Yeah. Right now, let's set it down to trackside before we get any more racing. Kimberly Pressler, the best-looking member of our crew, has more on Joey Pascarella. Yeah, you guys are definitely going to want to watch out for him. Number 825, he's only 15 years old, and even though he's not a pro, he had the 10th fastest lap time coming in today. And when I talked to him, he said he is so excited to be going up against veterans like Mark Bernhardt and, of course, Jeff Ward. So he said more than anything, he wants to make that main, so make sure you... All right, thank you very much. You've been racing all your life, 15 years of age. Can you imagine lining up in the gate with the guys of, of like Ward and some of these other just legends of the sport? Oh, he's just got to be ecstatic, you know. For me, I think I just started racing at 15, so uh, you know I'm sure he's got a lot of years under his belt, and uh, you know I think he's going to try and do the Supercross next year. I think that's his main goal. Is in 2009, he's trying to qualify for a lights event. I wish him uh, best of luck. Well, 112 is Ryan Pugh. Why do we show Ryan Pugh all around being a great guy on board the KTM? He's on the outside looking in, folks. He is in third place, which is not a terrible place to be, except in you're in an LCQ at Supermoto, because third place is the first guy that's in line to get something to eat. He is not moving on to the final if he does not advance his position. We're only taking the top two of these 12 right now. We've got 12 riders out there. They've all gone through one heat. The top two of these 12 will move into the main event final later today here on ESPN2. So, Ryan Pugh, bike number 112, a stellar rider, needs to be more stellar. I don't know if that's great grammar, but that's what he needs to do as we take a look at the two men out in front who are in transfer positions right now. Josh Chisholm, of course, being bike number 10 right there, and bike number four, Brandon Curry in the blue and white, sits in second place. Yeah, you know, I, I hope I hope somebody's uh, telling Josh that, uh, you know, he's, he's got a pretty good lead on third place, not really to, to get too caught up with Brandon. Brandon uh, is, is probably the faster of the two, and I'd hate to see him get into a mix-up and possibly go down. 
Well, right now, Brandon Curry, bike number four in the blue and white, is all over Chisholm. And Chisholm does not seen to be too worried about protecting his line and, and I'll be honest with you Brandon Curry doesn't look to be too worried about passing him right now whether he's gotten something from the pit boards he's come through but these guys are way out in front as they come into the stadium here Qualcomm will get an idea of just how far it is to position number three and of course Daryl Atkins, Ryan Pugh and the rest of the crew. Well, there it is one and two Chisholm Curry yeah, you know, I think the best thing for Josh to do is almost let Brandon by and, uh, you know, try and learn something from his lines and, uh, you know, hopefully pull away more from third because, you know, with him um, holding Brandon up, it's going to slow him right. down. And, and, and if he allows Brandon to get out front and try to stick with him the best he can, I think that's his best chances of uh, advancing to the final. Well, coming up, folks, later on today here on the Navy Moto X World Championships, you do not want to miss the best trick competition. It will be fantastic. You got names like Kyle Loza, Travis Pastrana, Twitch Stenberg. The crew will be here in full force at Qualcomm Stadium, and make sure you watch that. Back to racing action, though, right now is Brandon Curry out in front. Josh Chisholm sits in second. Daryl Atkins has now moved into third place, the young man from New Zealand. And it is now on the shoulders of Daryl Atkins, number 54. There you see him just starting to close in. And I'll tell you what, you talk about Josh Chisholm not getting tangled up with Brandon Curry. He's got a whole lot of Kiwi coming his way in the form of Daryl Atkins in the 54 bike. Yeah, Daryl's riding the Aprilia, and that's a, it's a very unique bike out there. It's a twin-cylinder, uh, you know, fuel-injected machine, and uh, it sounds really different. You know, if you ever get a sound bite of, uh, of that bike, it, it just sounds so different from the single-cylinder motorcycle. Four seconds, just over four seconds is the gap between second and third. Josh Chisholm, the bike number 10, and Daryl Atkins, bike number 54, riding the Aprilia. Doug pointed out a different bike setup, but right now it seems to be working for him. He is closing the gap, but unfortunately for Josh Chisholm, he is not being pulled like he thought he would by Brandon Curry. Yeah, he allowed to get a little bit of a gap there. I think he's still just, you know, just trying not to turn around. You know, he doesn't want to look back. He wants to look forward. Right, in, you know, just ahead of him is Brandon Curry, and he wants to stick with him the best he can. And here's the scene just past the start finish line. 825 is Joey Pascarello. Kimberly Preston was telling us about at 15 years of age, he may have just made a rookie mistake. We'll have to find out what exactly happened there, but he got tangled up with another rider. It looks like he was with 357, Gary Tracy. So they are in effect out of this, but we go back on course and look at number 10, Josh Chisholm, and the gap continues to come down as they come back inside Qualcomm. Daryl Atkins, number 54, trying to reel him in and trying to get in that second and final transfer position into the final. Yeah, I'm sure Daryl's going to try everything he can to, uh, you know, to get into that final. You know, he doesn't want to go home. He wants to stay here and do some racing. White flag is out, means one lap to go. So Daryl Atkins has one lap and one lap only to try to qualify for the main event. Otherwise, he is done for the day. Brandon Curry continues to lead this first of two LCQs where we have seen a lot of problems on the track. Riders fighting the fatigue, fighting other riders. Carrie Hart, a victim of that early on. But Brandon Curry, number four, has been true to his bike and true to his mission. He is out in front, and look at this. Chisholm and Atkins, 10 and 54. This is the battle for second place. This is going to be a close finish. I think these two won it real bad, and uh, I think in the dirt we're going to see some action. To the inside. Oh, he hooks it up. Daryl Atkins oh. sticks his nose in there and momentarily high sides. And unfortunately for him, keeps the bike running, which is a good thing. But now he's got problems behind him, but with an in effect, he took himself out of the final. Yeah, you know, you, you got one lap to go. You got to take your chances. Uh, I think he felt he thought he had a chance right there. And uh, it, sometimes you get it, and sometimes you don't. This time, he certainly did not get it. And that opens the door wide for Josh Chisholm, who breathes a sigh of relief. Brandon Curry, bike number four, comes around in this first of two LCQs. He will get the top spot. He is in to the main event. And after a great battle over three laps, Josh Chisholm also moves on to the main event. Interesting to see the rest of the pack as they come through, all fighting for position. This time it'll be 73, Steve Drew, who will grab third. Daryl Atkins slides down to fourth, and he's got to be thinking what could have been. Yeah. Well, this thing really got dicey to start when you put 12 guys in there. Look at this, a short shoot. They're all fighting for that first corner. Hay bales galore. <laughs> Carnage, like I said before, boy.
There you see Kerry Hart practicing on his punting skills for the San Diego Chargers right in the middle of your screen. He gets pinched off and kicked right in to the hay bales. And this was the big pass when Curry took advantage. Yeah, Brandon was able to get outside, squared up. I think that's the faster line. It's a little trickier, but it sets you up nice for the inside. Well, this is the big drama, though. Daryl Atkins from New Zealand trying to make a pass with half a lap to go. He sees an opening right here. What did he do wrong? Uh, I think he just came in. I think he clipped him a little bit. I think he wanted to push him, but, you know, he didn't want to take, him, take both of them down. And, uh, unfortunately, he's the one that has to go home. Well, it is a beautiful day in San Diego, as it is most days of the year. We are at the Navy MotoX World Championships, the first ever only on ESPN. There you see Brandon Curry off his big victory just moments ago here as we take a look but last summer Kyle Loza became the first Moto X athlete to pull the body varial since Chuck Carruthers in 2004 earning Loza his first ever gold medal Sunday Night Baseball Yankees Red Sox 8 Eastern on ESPN it was terrifying. Yeah, the bike had just vanished, and we were stuck out here. One hour later, Tim and Jesse's bike was recovered thanks to LoJack, the only vehicle recovery system used by police. LoJack, the most successful theft recovery system on Earth. Series, San Diego Bay and Detroit Riverfront. Tickets at RedBullAirRace.com. God help us all. Welcome back to San Diego, California. We want to remind you that coverage of the inaugural Navy MotoX World Championships continues Sunday, beginning at 4 Eastern on ESPN. See all the greats, including Brian Deegan and Tommy Flowers in the Step Up Finals Part 2 and the Freestyle Elimination Round. Then at 6 Eastern on ESPN2, catch Travis Pastrana and Moto X Racing and the Freestyle Final. And as always, you can log on to expn.com. Todd Harris along with Doug Henry and the whole crew here ready to go. This is the last of the last chance qualifiers. There's going to be no double secret probation. This is it. This is the last one. Ten men fighting for two spots. And this is how it's going to shake down. Costello, Burton, Marks, O'Hara want it. There's the guy you like, Kurt Nickel. And, of course, Lewis Halliday, Dimmick, and Welsh. Who's going to win this one, Doug Henry? I really think Kurt's got to get out to a good start. Uh, I liked him, and, you know, he almost got into the main event just uh, with that last qualifier. But I think the start, boy, I tell you, I keep going back to the start. It's really important. Well, we've seen five heats so far, and no one has come back from further than fourth place. And right up the problem, trying to get a two-minute hold, did not get it up soon enough. And it was Derek Costella, and once again, riders down on that short suit tight corner. Wow. We'll have to get Kimberly Pressler, who is down there, get a mind's eye view. She can tell us exactly what happened. Dominic Dimmick, though, takes advantage of all that. Dalton Dimmick, excuse me, goes to the front of the pack, bike number 27. 752. Cameron Wells also trying to get into the fray. You can, you can feel how tense it was down there. Kimberly, what went down? Guys, Derek tried to get a hold, but it didn't happen quick enough. What exactly happened with the bike? It doesn't look like it's starting. Um, the bike is shut off. Like, they put your hand up and tell them to stop. They're supposed to, like, stop it, but they didn't, so. Wow. Stop. Well, we're sorry to hear that, and uh, guys, back to you. Look at that. You see Kimberly jump right in there. That's like Geraldo Rivera. She was bam, right on top. I got the story. Well done, Kimberly. Uh, you know, take me through it. I'm no mechanic, but Doug, what do you, you got locked up or something like that? The well, you know, you, you shut these things off for a second, and, uh, you know, they, they, they sit down there and idle, and sometimes they get a little bit loaded up, and, uh, you know, you give it a little throttle, and sometimes they just die. Oh. And that's not good when it's a four-stroke. You get that four-stroke fever, and they're tough to kick back over. He tried to get a hold. Obviously, the starter did not see it. There you see Kurt Nickel 
Kurt Mickle right now is bike number eight. He sits in fourth place. That's not good enough for a helmet. That's not even good enough to get into the big show. Kurt Mickle right now is in a precarious situation, not making the main event. We're going six laps. We're only taking two. There will be no more LCQs, folks. If you're not in the top two of this race right here, right now, your day in San Diego has come to a conclusion. Yeah, out of these four guys, though, you know, Kurt's got the most experience out there. Uh, I think he's just got to get these passes underway, you know, six laps to go and, you know, six laps short race, you know, he's got to get going. Dalton Dimmick coming to us from Fort Collins, Colorado, the 20-year-old. He is fourth in overall AMA Pro Life points three years in a row, so he has some experience. Dalton Dimmick, Fort Collins, Colorado, is your leader. He is right now holding one of the two lucky tickets that gets you in to the main event. Yeah, Kurt Nagol just, just pushed his way right through there and uh, made his way into third. He's got one more to go. Uh, we'll see if he can make it happen in the dirt. 152 right now. 752, excuse me, is Cameron Welsh. He stands in the way of Kurt Nickel and that second trans position. Look how wide Nichols goes. He's going to slingshot back to the inside. I think he just got offline there. And, uh, he just tried to keep it on two wheels. You get off into those little rolly, pebbly dirt spots, and uh, you know you can't, you know, always stay in that line you want to be in. Well, here's the section that he really likes. Watch Nichols see if he gets on the throttle here and makes a pass. Inside line, not close enough. Cameron Welsh will hold on to second place, but he can feel the heat of the man from Great Britain. Plus, Tyler O'Hara is also closing in. O'Hara sitting in fourth place right now. Yeah, he's got the pressure. He's, Welsh has got his hands full with uh, Kurt Nickel right behind him, and there it goes. Kurt Nickel Kurt in the orange, the eight ATM bike right there. Look at this. Tyler O'Hara says, hey, I'll follow you right on through. But Cameron Welsh able to shut the door. Now he's going to go to work and try to get past Kurt Nickel and get what was his. But it is Kurt Nickel and Dalton Dimmick right now sitting in second and first place, respectively. Dalton Dimmick, number 27, is out in front, running the clean air, staying away from the fray as they come to the chicane. Yeah, this is still up for grabs right now. You know, these, these guys are real tight. You know, Kurt's not going to be able to run the wide lines to keep the speed up that he wants to. And, uh, you know, anybody could sneak inside him. He's got to be careful. Boy, great run right now for the battle for third place. Nickel has a little bit of breathing room. Tyler O'Hara currently sitting in fourth place. Here's Nickel coming through. But it is still Dalton Dimmick out in front. Cameron Wells sits in third. Tyler O'Hara sits in fourth place. Then you got guys with speed like Travis Marks and Johnny Lewis. And they're currently sitting in fifth and sixth respectively. Yeah, I expected to see Johnny Lewis up there a little bit more, you know, but he's, he's going to ride the 250 lights class this year. And I, this is his first time really riding a 450. He doesn't have much experience on his on his Yamaha, you know. So I think that it's uh, it's going to be a, you know, it's kind of a one-off race for him. And you know, he's going to be a little bit, you know, bummed out. But I think once he gets onto his bike, that he's going to be racing full time. I, I expect him to uh, be up front a little bit more. There's the battle for third place right now. 752 is Cameron Welsh battling with Tyler O'Hara. Their problem though is they are on the outside looking in because there are only two men that are advancing out of this one. We are taking the top two finishers. They transfer immediately on to the main event, and then our main event of 12 is full. No room left at that party. So it is Dalton Dimmick and Kurt Nickel out in front, one and two, and Kurt Nickel is the proverbial Charlie Bucket because he has the last golden ticket to get into <laughs> Willy Wonka's factory. Yeah, I think these guys back here, I think this is all bragging rights. You know, these guys just, you know, even though they don't have a chance at, you know, getting in unless something major happens, you know, they, they still want to go in there. and they. They want to say that they came to Moto X and, and, and did, you know, came right. in last chance, you know, third or fourth. It's, it's a big deal to them. Well, I'll tell you, your leader, Dalton Dimmick, has looked very good since he got that hole shot and just got away from the fray. Now he's got Kurt Nickel coming in. All that really is on the line here, Doug, is gate choice. And since these guys are going to be 11 and 12, is it really going to matter? But while I've got you on that subject, let's talk about gate choice. How important is it, especially on this short shoot we've got here? Well, for the top few guys, it's going to be really important. Uh, you know, those, I think those inside five gates are, are, are where the whole shot's going to come from, unless there's a tangle up right there at that first corner. But, you know, it's, it's a short start, it's a small gate, and the whole shot can really come from anywhere. We've seen so much carnage on, this, on right. these starts with the loose dirt, and I, I think it's just going to be a matter of confidence knowing that you qualify top. Number 129, as you saw coming to view, just about three and a half seconds behind Kurt Nickel. 
is trying to close the gap. Tyler Harris is in third place. He is from Petaluma, California, riding a KTM. He is trying to track down a KTM. Unfortunately, that KTM is about four seconds in front of him as the white flag comes out. The last lap on the last, last chance qualifier, and it is on. I'm sure Dalton's heart heart's starting to pounce right now, boy. One lap to go, and he's in the main. That's really exciting for him. Number 27 is Dalton Dimmick, the pride of Fort Collins, Colorado. The 20-year-old right now sits in first place. Kurt Nichols sits in second. This is the battle for third. There's your leader. There's second place. Here's the battle for third place right now. As you said, no golden helmets, no golden tickets. But as you said, pointing out, it's all about pride. Good experience, good chance to race, and you never know if someone makes a mistake up front, the door was wide open. You never know. The, the, the worst thing to happen is, is, you, is you let a guy go by you and say, yeah, I don't have a chance of getting in. A guy goes down and you, and you know, it's, you, you missed out because you gave up a little too early. Never give up. Wise words from one four-time champion in Doug Henry. We watched Dalton Dimmick go through the chicane being followed closely. It looks like Kurt Nichols closed the gap just a little bit as they come into Qualcomm for one more time. And speaking of closely, look at this. Johnny Lewis and Tyler O'Hara, they are starting to close the gap. Now, there's only 200 laps to go, but they are going to run out of real estate, but they made it a great race. Here they come to the finish line. Dalton Dimmick gets the win and the transposition as does Kurt Nickel. He will get the win. 21 goes to Johnny Lewis. He'll grab third. And a great run for all those guys. Johnny Lewis, Tyler O'Hara, fantastic job nonetheless. But a very difficult start for a lot of racers. Once again, it was the key getting to that side line and not getting pitched off. Dalton Dimmick stayed away from the traffic, and he got the win. Yeah, there he is. He's trying to stop the starters, but it's time to go, you know, and when, when the gate's about ready to go, it's too bad. There you see the rider in the middle, Costello just does not get the hand up. Everyone pitches over that first corner. And I'll tell you what, Dalton Dimmick, he, he was started on the a outside effect, didn't he? Yeah, he was on the outside. He came in and uh, got a good start. This is the battle for second. Kurt Nickel on the 8 KTM orange bike there making that pass. Beautiful textbook pass. It's right past. Yeah, he's so smooth on the asphalt. So there is the stylings of one Kurt Nickel. As we take a look, we are set to go. All 12 men are ready to go in the final. Dimmick and Nickel are in. When we come back, we will have the main event as the Navy Moto X World Championships continue. Yankees are up in Fenway to face Dice K and the Boston Red Sox on Sunday Night Baseball presented by Taco Bell. Coverage begins with baseball tonight driven by Chevy at 7 Eastern and for more you can always log on to ESPN.com. You're New England guy, Sox or Yanks? <laughs> I guess I'd have to lean a little bit more towards the Sox. We'll talk about that later. We've got our own heavy hitters here. It's not the battle at Fenway but we got some great ones. Troy Herfoss looked fantastic in his qualifier and the man that's like the energizer bunny Wardy keeps going strong Burkhart looked very very good and of course we cannot forget the youngster from Happy Valley Provo Utah Cassidy Anderson winning so the top four seeds much like the NCAA March Madness all four seeds number one they're all moving on yeah I just hope to see these four guys get out front and uh, you know put a good race together you know they, they they've both you know they know that this is uh this is the first race of the, race of the season they're trying to get their bikes field out you know but they're going yeah. to go out there and go for it I got to ask you this though as we look at Troy Troy Herfoss here look at the course what have you seen develop over the last little while here Remember the inside part is all the stadium and the outsides on the concrete yeah the, the whole inside is the dirt section uh, outside we have asphalt but it turns out that it's about a 60 40 split as far as time goes right 60 percent in the asphalt 40 percent on the dirt and uh, the dirt section seems to be giving a few guys trouble but most of these guys who made it into the main event are just fine with it all right here we go let's take a look at the Super Moto X qualifiers. Herfoss, Conlon, and Ward. Pingree, David Pingree is in there, as is Burkhart, Fillmore, Anderson, and Carlson. It's a 12-man affair. We are going a whopping 10 laps. So, here's my question to you, Mr. Four-Time Champion. We got some guys that just came off the LCQ. They've got to turn around in just a few minutes, and they got to run another 10 laps after running six. Big deal or 
lighten up, Todd. Not so bad. You know, it's a, it was a six-lap heat race. I'm sure their adrenaline's going. You know, they had a little bit of time to relax, hopefully get a new rear tire on. And, uh, you know, they actually get an extra start. You know, they had an extra start running those last chance qualifiers. Is that going to work to their advantage or not? We'll see. Well I, well, I know our researcher, BJ Smith, says that second to the inside lane is the way to go. But once we saw in the last last chance qualifier, guys are coming from the outside like Dalton Dimmick, and they're closing that line down. Where would you pick? I would be safe. I'm, I'm a guy who likes to run the inside and uh, run, a, run a nice, safe line. I see Mark and uh, Troy Herfoss on the inside. I think those two guys got the best chance of staying out of trouble, and that's where I'd like to be. All right. We are set to go. This is the main event. Super Moto Final. The 30 board is vertical in San Diego, California. We are scheduled for 10 grueling and exciting laps. The 32nd board goes sideways and we are set to go racing. It's a mad rush to the outside. Who's going to emerge from the tunnel? Troy Herfoss, bike number seven out in front with Kurt Nickel also on board at KTM City in second place. Mark dropped back on that start, but, you know, Kurt Nicole, he's got some wide elbows there. I'm sure if we go back to replay, I'm sure he muscled his way through that first turn. Well, Wardy's in there as well, but it's Troy Herfoss out of Australia, out in front, now sitting in second place. That is Jeff Ward. David Pingree sits in third place. So it is Herfoss, Ward, and Pingree, top three. Trying to open up in a lead. There you see bike number 11. That's Chris Fillmore coming into play as well. Pingree riding very wide. There's Jeff Ward. There's Pingree. There's bike number 11 of Chris Fillmore, who had a masterful qualifying run. But it's all her boss right now. The Australian is leading the most American pack now back into Qualcomm. Yeah, Troy's just got to keep his head on, you know, just try to focus ahead of him. Don't worry about what's going on behind him. Look at the, look at the track. He's got a clean track in front of him. Just focus ahead and put down some good laps. Just for you that are watching, Mark Burkhart currently sits in seventh place right now as we look at our leader, Troy Herfoss, as they'll make their way back out. And look at Ward, he puts the pressure on. He's going to go for the slingshot, takes a different line. We saw him work this earlier masterfully, and here he comes to the outside. He's right there as well, but not enough drive. It's never a good thing to follow. When, when you're right on a guy, and he looks like he's making little mistakes, try a different line. You know, Jeff's used that line, I'm sure, before in practice. He's comfortable with it. You know, you can't pass a guy following him, so he's got to try a different line. Troy Herfoss, your leader, bike number seven in the orange. Second to him is Jeff Ward on board the Honda, 46 years of age, coming to us from Newport Beach, California. He's won just about everything other than Miss Congeniality, but it's Herfoss, Ward, and Pingree, your top three. I don't like that little look back from Troy, you know. Look ahead, look, just stay focused on the front. You know, you got Wardy on you, you know somebody's there. Just focus on that, what's going on in front of you. So if you're in this position, who would you rather be, knowing that you've got seven laps to go, Herfuss or Ward? I want to be Herfuss. I want to be in front. I want to have control of the race. He has control right now. And that, folks, is why Doug Henry has four championships. Burkhart making his move up there. He's moved up to sixth place as we can look at bike number 15, Cassidy Anderson. And look at these lines. Look at the swap. He is moving up. Number one is Mark Burkhart. And Burkhart has moved four positions in the last lap. Yeah, Mark is on fire. I just, uh, I hope he's got enough time. It's a short race. Uh, I haven't seen him go through that six back yet. I don't know if he's doing his good line, his triple triple. If he is, I'm sure that's where he's going to make up his time. And while we're away, Jeff Ward made the pass on Troy Herfoss, but Mark Burkhart riding like he's in an HOV lane on the five. He is moving up fast. Jeff Ward leads. He is followed by Troy Herfoss. And we'll see if this plays out now. Does Herfoss feel more comfortable being the pursuer rather than the pursuer?
Well, it looks like Troy is faster in the on the asphalt, and I think, you know, these two get bumping and banging. It's going to allow the other riders to catch up. I think they got just got to be careful and, uh, you know, not get too overly aggressive. Jeff Ward is your leader. Number seven is Troy Herbos from Australia, sitting in second place. Now it's back inside on the dirt where Wardy probably has a slight advantage here, looking to open up a little something, but look how he is protecting his line. He is not giving Herfus any daylight. Wardy takes advantage of every little every little chance he can get. He, when he's downsides a jump, he's on that throttle as soon as he can. He makes up every little bit of time on the dirt. Gives himself a little breathing room as they come out here. Look at Herfus doing the thing that Doug Henry says, don't do, young man. Looking over his shoulder, someone's coming. Don't worry about it. They'll catch up to you. His problem, though, right now is he is sitting in silver helmet position. Jeff Ward is your leader. Here comes third place. David Pingree in the mix as well. Pingree sits in fourth place. And look at that. The man on the move is Mark Burkhart. Just two laps ago, he was in ninth place. Now he is sitting in third. He's, in a, he's on a mission. He's not even halfway through. He sees the guys up there. He's not too far back. He's not out of this yet. David Pinkery sits in fourth place right now. Burkhart has now moved into third. Benny Carlson was bike 45. I'll tell you what, Burkhart is absolutely flying. Can you imagine if he would be in front from the get-go? This is what I want to see. I want to see the six-pack. I want to see if Mark is still doing the triple-triple. There it is. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see from him. He, he felt comfortable on it. There was a lot of guys yesterday who got hurt on that particular jump. He was nervous whether he should do it or not, if it was worth it. I said, Mark, you know, it's going to help you. Well, it didn't help Mickey Diamond. We must send our best out to Mickey Diamond, who's recovering after breaking his tibia. In the hospital, he's getting better soon. It was on that triple-triple. He was the guy that was pushing that. Everyone should try to triple-triple. Mickey was the first one that was really pushing that issue. And unfortunately, he's unable to race today. Well, we get back to our battle right now. There is Burkhardt, currently sitting in third place. Only three seconds down from the leader. So Mark Burkhardt is absolutely tearing this course up. Yeah, I think he's got time. I, I, I honestly think he's got, he's got, it's halfway through. Uh, you know, he's got that little, uh, that section down in the dirt. I think he's going to, he sees the leaders, he's, he sees blood, he's going to get him. Mark Burkhardt sitting in third place right now, that's bronze helmet position, trying to get himself a little more precious metal. Look at him rail through here, what is he doing right? We saw him do the triple-triple, examine what he's doing right out there. Well, he's just real smooth, you know, I, I know this, that he's been trying to work on the asphalt part of his uh, supermoto, and, you know, he just... Oh, I just love that. <laughs> Sorry about that. I just he he's just looks really, really smooth on that triple triple. And I think that's that's what's gonna help him get to the front. As far as the asphalt goes, he's I know he's been trying to carry more speed through the midsection of the corner. He's been really working on, you know, just trying to loosen up and relax and let the bike do what it's gotta do through the corner to keep his speed up. Well you're a former racer, a wise man once told me be aggressively patient. What does that mean for a racer? Boy, you know, it's it's a tough thing to teach to a racer. Rider, you know, but you gotta have it. You gotta be aggressive, and yet you gotta be patient. You gotta, you gotta know where you're making up your time and where you're losing it, and don't push it where you're not making up your time. Seven is her boss. Number one is Mark Burkhart, and there is your leader out of Newport Beach, California. 46 years young, Jeff Ward is your leader. And it looks like Herfoss is actually trying to close in just a little bit, but maybe he's getting pushed by Burkhart, a reverse draft. Yeah, Troy keeps looking back. I, I don't like that, and I'll say that a million times until he stops doing it. <laughs> Burkhart is absolutely just picking up some of that real estate and sending it down. It is Ward, it is Herfoss, it is Burkhart. Top three, we check in with Kimberly Questler. Guys, everybody knows that Jeff Ward is one of the best riders out here. But what you might not know is that he's had two surgeries on his right eye since the end of last season due to skin cancer. Now he says that he's got another one at the end of the year because it didn't go as well as planned. He gets dirt in it when he's riding, but he says it doesn't affect him whatsoever. And you can tell that because he's sitting in first. Yeah, no question about it, but he's got some company right now as we were talking with Kimberly. Troy Herfoss lost that second position. Mark Burkhart now in second. And as you said, there's plenty of time, Doug, and he is on the prowl. Jeff Ward has got to be feeling this. Oh, that is for sure. I mean, when they get into the stadium in that dirt section, you can see how much Mark closes up on that six-pack over there. Uh, you 
know, whether he can make the pass there on Jeff or not on this lap, I'm not sure. Well, Kimberly's report about the trials and travails of Jeff Ward. Gonna get a little more dicey for him because look at this. They have actually pulled all three, and this is exactly what Doug Henry wanted to see before they dropped the gate. All three of these guys banging bars, and here it is, Wardy leading them back into Qualcomm. Oh, look at the triple triples gonna pay off again. Oh, and, and Jeff gets yep. slid off into the loose stuff. That's what's going to happen. You get you get off into that loose stuff, you lose your traction, you can't stay in your line. And I think, you know, the, the pressure of Mark, Jeff knows Mark's doing that triple-triple. He knows he's coming. From ninth to first place, kids never, ever give up. It is Mark Burkhardt, your leader, as we are coming down to two laps to go. Jeff Ward sits in second, Troy Herfoss sits in third, but Burkhardt has had the ride of a lifetime today here in San Diego, California. He has got that Yamaha completely hooked up. Yeah, I think, I think for Jeff, you know, he's going to see him doing that triple-triple and just know that, you know, th he's he's not going to be able to make up that time. I think, you know, the... Jeff's, Jeff's fooled me before, though, you know, he, he can go fast, he can make things happen. Uh, I think he's got to worry about Troy right now, though. Mark Burkhart from Pataskala, Ohio, 28 years of age, a 2007 X Games gold medalist, a 2007 AMA Supermoto champion, a 2006 X Games silver medalist, and we got a battle now changing once again. And Wardy's getting pressure from his good old friend Troy Herfoss back for more. Yeah, you see that line there. Jeff just, you know, he opens the door for Troy to come in on the inside. He's got to be careful there because when he goes outside and Troy comes on the inside, he's got to be careful that Troy doesn't just sit there and wait. You know, he, Jeff's on the outside. If he, if he just sits there and waits right there for him, Jeff has nowhere to go. This is the battle for second place, the silver helmet position. Troy Herfoss trying to get the inside line on Jeff Ward. Wardy right there, bike 3X, trying to hold off the seven, and he's opened the door a little too wide, and Herfoss walks right on through. I don't know what happened there. I saw Jeff turn around. I, I think, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what happened if something's up with Wardy's bike, or it just maybe, maybe he jammed something in the dirt section or something because he looks like he might be riding a little injured or something. Yeah, he is definitely off the pace of that man, Mark Burkhardt, your leader, Troy Herfoss, now sits in second place. Jeff Ward sits in third place. So all three men on the podium, but all of them trying to claim the golden helmet as the leader brings them in to Qualcomm Stadium once again. We remind you folks, Mark Burkhardt got shuffled back in the start. He was sitting in ninth place, two laps into this 10-lap affair, and now here he is as the white flag comes out. He is in first place. Mark Burkhardt, by virtue of the triple-triple, has been stuck. I think that's what really set him apart. I think if, if you were to take that out of the equation, I think Mark is probably a little hungrier. He, he you know, he, he's real comfortable with his bike. I think, he, you know, it would have been a closer race if, uh, if not for that. Uh, you know, but I tell you, Mark, he, I take my hat off to him because th there were guys getting hurt, and this, this race, it, it's very important, but it's not the AMA series right now, and I know that that's his main focus, and, and, and to get taken out of this first event, I think would have been a big loss for him but for him to take that chance and to continue doing that risky move you know he it just shows how bad he really wants it this is the final lap the supermoto final mark Burkhart continues to lead there's troy herfoss continuing to look over his shoulder doug henry's going to talk to him about that and jeff ward sits in third place but for the last five laps the man on the move has been mark Burkhart on board the yamaha he has absolutely dominated this course and really it's because of the triple triple i mean you see the distance in the real estate he's able to cover it looks like he's going to back it down just a little bit here no need to triple out that's good play it safe that's what you got to do you know you got a good lead you don't need to go anywhere, do anything special. And here he comes to take a chicken flag. We'll get out the cloth and polish up the gold helmet. Your winner, Mark Burkhardt, gets the victory. Troy Herfoss will settle for third. And Jeff Ward, a great ride, will get third place. Troy Herfoss will get second place. Yeah, I think all three guys got to be real happy with that. I mean, it's the first race of the season. Uh, you know, uh, Jeff, I hope he's not disappointed. I hope he's okay. 
Uh, he put in a really, really good, strong race there. I, th I think, uh, you know, I think he had a little problem there in the middle. It really seemed like it was a race of thirds because the first third really belonged to Troy Herfoss. Then Jeff Ward kind of took over. But the last three or four laps, it was all Mark Burkhardt. Unbelievable performance by him. Let's go back to the start. Here's where the problems really started for Mark Burkhardt, namely. Yeah, he just got pinched off. I think Troy got a better jump. And he had to just wait. He just kind of had to follow Troy. You know, get around that inside, get through the tunnel. I think he gets squeezed out again here. You know, it's just, there's too many guys in front of him. Here was the pass that got him in his second place. He takes the inside line on the right side of your screen. Yeah, that's the, that's the section where if you go out wide, you leave yourself vulnerable, but it is a little bit faster. Throws down a little Bubba scrub there, keeping the bike low, and this was the pass for the lead. Yeah, I think Jeff felt the pressure, you know. He knew that Mark was doing the triple-triple. You could see he's out in the loose stuff, and uh, once you get out in that stuff, you've got to be real careful not to go down. And finally, the checkered flags. He brings it across. Mark Burkhart, your winner here in San Diego, California. The young man from Ohio is taking home a title at the first ever Navy Moto X World Championships. He gets the victory here at Supermoto. So it's Burkhart, your winner, followed by Troy Herfoss. And Jeff Ward finishes in third place. A very strong showing. Let's sit it down to Sal Masakela. Unbelievable. Mark Burkhart, you, my friend, are an animal. What was going through your mind after that start in ninth place? And you're like, what am I doing sitting here? Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. I was like, man, what am I doing back here? But I kind of got ran into the tough blocks. Um, I didn't get a great jump. And once you don't get a good jump in the dirt, I mean, your, your start is over with. You might as well just try to stay up. And I came out ninth. And as I saw, as I was, oh, Ward was leading. I kind of looked over at one point. I was like, oh, man, I got a long way to go. And just uh, ten, a couple handful of laps. So. My Graves Yamaha Monster Energy bike, it performed awesome, and uh, I was able to do a triple-triple over there that I don't think anybody else has done today. So, uh, and I made a few passes there, and just on the asphalt, I was just kind of cruising, just riding behind people, and uh, definitely made it easy for me jumping a triple-triple. Well, congratulations, the first race of the season. How much did it feel like deja vu from X Games? Were you in a similar position where you're looking at Wardy's back? Yeah. Uh, He's a lot older than me, and I'm no no ripping on him, but the guy can still ride. And uh, I mean, I, I'm glad he's here racing with us. That's for sure. He's going to retire, but obviously he can still ride. So um, I'm just glad I was able to put whole 10 laps together and pass all those people and get up front. Well, determination, absolutely fantastic. Congratulations. The first golden helmet here at the Navy Motor X World Championships, and we've only just begun. We got all sorts of things happening today. Kimberly Pressler, update us on what's going to go down tonight with Best Trick. Well, Sal, we just saw some great race action, but it is time for some amazing trick action. Best Trick is coming up, and we've got three ramps all ready to go. We're going to see some back. Uh-oh. No problem. First time in freestyle.